Hi, my name is Thomas Holman, aka Mr. Warpert, and this is the 19th episode of the Mr. Warpert Show. Been a little bit of a crazy week for me. I ended my multiple week accidental hiatus on Twitch, streamed the Fallout 4 Automatron DLC, ended some dragon hunting last night in the Dragon Age Inquisition, both of which you can watch because I'm going to annotate them here because both of the streams get exported to YouTube and everything works just fine. Unlike the usual route where I have to edit, render, and then upload, which sometimes takes forever depending on how long I stream for. Outside of those two streams though, another reason that made the week kind of chaotic for me is if you follow me on Twitter, you may have seen that I was talking about going in for a procedure, anesthesia, maybe saw the colonoscopy prep, tweet, whatever. Had a colonoscopy on Tuesday afternoon, about 1.45 in the afternoon, when I had to check in. So my prep started Monday at noon. I did the full bottle of Miralax, 64 ounces of Gatorade, plus two Dulcolax tablets. That was fun. Then had to follow it up basically Tuesday morning with kind of a super laxative and magnesium citrate. It was a, t- a 10 ounce bottle. Didn't have anything to cut it with, and that stuff's disgusting, so I had to drink it straight. It was not fun. I got all but like the bottom like a little bit done because I just could not stomach the rest. And it's been a long time since I've had to take that. I think I was a kid the last time I did it. I was like maybe 15, 16. And it ruined me on Mountain Dew for years because it was the lemon stuff at the time. And I cut it with Mountain Dew and I just began to associate Mountain Dew with that taste and it was awful. Terrible. And didn't even kick in until after the procedure, which was just awesome. It took it four hours ahead of time, exactly like I was supposed to. Didn't really do anything until after I was already done. So, yay. The procedure itself went fine, though it took an hour and a half to get into the actual operating room, which wasn't too bad as far as procedures and stuff go. But there was a lady at the check-in or the waiting room area in Mayo Clinic just talking on her phone like there was a person across the room she was yelling at. Like right next to the check-in desk, too. It was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Nobody has said, hey, stop. And that was right when my people went off and I had to go to the door to go and, you know, do stuff and get anesthesia and get knocked out and then... Yeah, that whole shebang. That went smoothly enough. Woke up just fine. Once the procedure started, took 40 minutes. Then afterwards, I had the best cheese curds of my life. That's right, Aaron Porter. Cheese curds are amazing. You suck. As an aside, anybody ever gets up to Rochester, Minnesota? Newt's. I went to the one on the north side, uh, up on 52. Awesome little sports bar. Seriously, their appetizers are amazing. Can't wait to go back and try their chicken tenders, because I love me some chicken tenders. But the reason for the colonoscopy is actually something that is kind of the topic of the video. I may have mentioned it in either tweets or streams or other YouTube videos, things of that nature, that I have Crohn's disease. Now, a couple years ago, I actually, when I was kind of getting started with the whole YouTube stuff, I was in the middle of dealing with an ostomy bag and all that jazz that goes along with that. Um, so today's topic is kind of my journey over the last 15 years or so with Crohn's disease. Now, I was first diagnosed when I was 11. It was in the spring slash summer when things kind of started to get worse and we finally decided to go to the doctor. Uh, looking back, I think the initial, oh, something was wrong here, that was kind of the starting point would probably be, uh, it was fifth grade bas- or fifth grade baseball, sorry, uh, and I took a liner in left field, just kind of came up, went right past the glove into my gut and it just dropped me like a sack of bricks. And the coach was like, what's going on? And couldn't believe that I just couldn't get up and actually finish the play. Now, don't really hold much negativity towards that, because as a a guy who's coached myself, you know, you don't assume the worst. You assume that, oh, the kid is just, oh, he just took it and doesn't know how to deal with the pain of basically getting a ball to the gut, had the wind knocked out of him, whatever. Should be able to get up and keep playing, especially a fifth grade kid. Uh, But, you know, having Crohn's, you just don't assume the kid has Crohn's. Not to mention at the time, which was about 2001, I think, that type of disease in kids was not super prevalent. It has kind of ballooned up since then, and uh, especially in the community that I'm, you know, from, that's become a much more prevalent issue with things like ulcerative colitis. A couple people, like my first cousin and people that I know, have Crohn's disease, especially skewing younger, which has become more prevalent after I was diagnosed. So I don't fault the coach for, you know, assuming that I was just you know, being a wuss. Uh, a few weeks after that, it just kind of got worse. I just couldn't keep food down. Uh, I remember one case in particular, I was eating Sloppy Joe's, which I'm not a fan of. I don't like loose meat sandwiches outside of pulled pork or like uh, shredded chicken sandwiches. Just something about Sloppy Joe's just makes me like sick in and of itself. Um, but I couldn't keep them down, like no matter what. Not even just that, but it was other foods too. But it was that one specific meal that my mom made 
that my dad just kind of lost it and it was like, you got to keep your food down, stop throwing up. And then my mom was like, well, maybe something actually is wrong because it's happening more than, you know, more and more often. Finally went to a doctor. That took a few months for them to realize we have no idea what's going on. Did a bunch of tests, upper, lower GIs, a bunch of CT scans, a bunch of x-rays, a bunch of blood cultures, thing, just basically trying to figure it out. Thought it was acid reflux, and that wasn't it, and a bunch of other things. They finally referred me up to Mayo Clinic. And it was the same thing there. You know, a lot of specialists, a lot more tests. And for the right before the final diagnosis, I was actually seeing an oncologist. Because they thought, hey, it might actually be stomach cancer. And at 11, I was cognizant enough to know that, oh, that's really, really bad. So that was not a fun elevator ride, from what I remember. But after that specialist, we went to the pediatric gastroenterologist by the name of Dr. Ellie Yosef, who, within like two minutes, had the diagnosis down. I uh, came in, looking at my chart, saw me, I was sitting there with my parents, and he's like, hey, let me see your hands. So I hold out my hands. Turns out I have like drum tip, drum tip fingertips that get more pronounced when the Crohn's is active, it's a sign of like severe active inflammation. And he was like, yep, you got Crohn's. And from then it's been a, you know, an interesting ride in terms of treatment because outside of the actual initial diagnosis, which is hard to pin down, given that, it, you know, stomach disorders can be a lot of different things. You know, they thought it may be celiacs. Like I said, they thought it maybe could have been cancer, could have been ulcerative colitis, ended up being Crohn's. And there's a few other things that they were throwing out there as well. So it's pretty hard to pin down, especially in kids. At least specifically at the time. But regardless of the journey to the diagnosis, the journey for treatment is probably, I would say, worse. Uh, just because the drugs don't last, don't work effectively, or at the time were not designed for kids, and there is no cure. There are some long-term treatments that can work for people. You know, it's just kind of a hit and miss. There's no silver bullet for, you have Crohn's, you take this drug. There's a very wide range of what Crohn's can be in terms of symptoms and how it will affect your life. I'm definitely on the moderate to severe, sometimes quite severe. Uh, I wouldn't say really quite severe, I guess. I know some people who have had it much worse than myself. Um, but, you know, I've had four surgeries in a couple of years, had an ostomy bag for 10 months, um, had, have had issues, you know, gaining weight up until this last year, which has been great. Uh, but I think, you know, over time, I've only been in remission maybe cumulative nine total months out of 15 years of having the disease. So I definitely fall on the moderate to severe side of things. I know a lot of people who get by with just diet and some general, over like, cheaper medications or some pills, like azathioprine or something, which isn't too terribly expensive. Me, though, it's been Remicade for seven years, which failed. Uh, I developed an antibody to it, and if my roommate in college wasn't a smart person, probably would be dead right now, just because it would have killed me. Uh, but then, there, then it was Humira for a couple of years, which had a whole fight with the insurance to get that covered. At the time, it wasn't yet recognized as a Crohn's drug, which is a weird thing about Crohn's being inflammation. A lot of rheumatoid arthritis drugs, Humira, Remicade, were designed for RA, also work for Crohn's because its underlying inflammation treats the same thing. I'm on a drug now called Simzia, which is specifically designed for Crohn's, one of the first biological drugs designed and targeted specifically for Crohn's has been going pretty good outside of some ordering issues with the insurance company, which I'm dealing with right now, which is a whole other topic that I might get to in a little bit. But, you know, I've also been on things like Intercort, Pudesonide, Methotrexate, Azathioprine. Uh, been on, did I, I don't know if I said prednisone. I think I've been on that for quite a few different periods of time. It's got the big uh, squirrel cheeks because you gain the water weight. Um, you know, been on quite a few different cocktails of drugs over the years. Right now, though, the Simzia is working, which is nice, but it's also crazy expensive at $3,800 a pop without insurance. Yeah, that's really expensive. And despite the medications, I did already mention, I've had multiple surgeries. My first one in 2012, it was right after college. I was in the middle of looking for full-time teaching work. I uh, had to get nine inches taken out of my uh, ilium, I think it was, and or small intestine, I guess. And they put something back up. Everything was good. Didn't need a bag that time. Uh, but it did kind of screw the whole finding a full-time job because I had stomach surgery and couldn't move and couldn't work for over a month. So I ended up subbing for a year. Cut to a year and a half later, more or less, uh, my dad switched insurance providers. And I was under their plan, being only, I think, 24 at the time. And they had basically lied and said, oh, we'll cover Humira. But only, oh, yeah, you have to wait a year and then we'll recover. Then we'll cover it. Which didn't really sit well because I needed my drugs every every other week. 
So for like four or five months, I didn't have meds, which of course, things snowballed, got progressively and progressively worse until Memorial Day that year, 2013. I was out ripping fence posts with my brother after eating some breakfast. Uh, about 10 a.m., give or take, uh, just kind of collapsed in the field. I like collapsed. I was like, oh man, I need to just go sit like, right now. So I made it inside under my own power. Had chills, fever, shakes, threw up the breakfast. It was a lot like when I rejected the Renegade and I was worried that it was I was rejecting the Humera because I had just taken it a few days before. And it was really a really rough experience. And then the last time I took a trip to the bathroom, came out, fainted, just dropped right in front of the, cl or the stairway door uh, upstairs. And so my dad and my brother carried me to the car. Thankfully, he gave me some like stuff to drink. I had some great Kool-Aid because my blood sugar when we got to the hospital was like super low. Uh, it turns out I had a major blood infection, as well as some uh, abscesses uh, outside my intestine that may or may not have been leaking fluid. It was really hard for the ER to tell. Um, but like my heart rate was really, really up. My blood pressure was awful. It was something like 64 or 29, something like that. And like I said, the blood sugar was just on the floor. It was really bad. It took a few hours to get stable before they put me up in an uh, ambulance up to Mayo. About a two hour or hour and a half drive, I guess. And once there, it was a week-long stay in the ICU. Had a pick line put in, their central line put in. I think I have a picture that I might throw up. Uh, that was for me when I got out of the hospital. Because I lost a pretty good amount of weight over that stretch. Because I couldn't eat. I had a, a tube sucking on my stomach uh, constantly uh, during that whole week outside of the last couple of days. Missed my brother's graduation from that. Did make the party, which is what that photo was from. Uh, but like the reason my arm was up, I think it was my right arm, was up like that was because like my blood pressure was just so because I had they had just been giving me fluids nonstop. I literally couldn't put my arm down. Otherwise it would just like it felt like my hand was gonna explode. So I had to keep my arm up. Or maybe it was my left arm. It was a while ago, so don't look at me. Then from that, turns out I had a blood clot in my lung, didn't know, and it totally passed and then it killed a part of my lower right lung. So I went up to the hospital, had to get that figured out. That took another couple of days in the hospital that summer in June. Which was a whole lot of fun. Turns out the bottom like eight dish of my lung was dead. By now it may have started to regenerate, haven't really looked, nor have I actually felt any specific lung issues from that, so maybe it already has because they told me it would. Then a month after that, after RTX, coming back from RTX actually, I could like, my intestines basically like collapsed. Though I have a stricture in my ileum, kind of like a kink, more or less. And that just kind of really hard clamped down on the way back, and I was driving back solo from Austin, Texas, which is a 16-hour drive. Had to split it in between a couple of days after a stay over, I think it was in Norman, Oklahoma, that I stopped. But then I managed to, like, eke out a liquid diet for a couple of days before finally getting up to the Mayo Clinic for surgery. I had surgery to remove 16 inches of colon, large intestine, and small intestine, kind of cumulatively. That surgery failed. Then I had to do an emergency surgery without a pain blocker in my spine, like the first one. Uh, that ended up with me having the ostomy bag and then having like the worst anesthesia induced nightmares It was awful like whatever they gave me. I hope they never do again Especially without a pain blocker because holy crap. It was like a waking nightmare. It was awful But with the bag your body has to get used to not having you know basically not shitting and your small intestine has to learn to slow down So they put me on a you know a regiment of Imodium uh, high fiber like Metamucil stuff mixed in to eat before to drink before eating and had to mix that in still taking the emodium just because even after the everything got put back together my intestines still move really really fast but i had that bag for 10 months and it took three weeks in the hospital for my output to finally like slow down enough to the point where they're like well you're not going to dehydrate yourself if you go home because i was constantly on an iv of a nutrient solution and uh, fluids essentially and they finally sent me home after a few weeks, which was the most boring three weeks of my life because there's so much, so much, only so much man versus food you can watch when you're in the hospital. And I watched a ton of cooking shows when I was up in the hospital, which is kind of paradoxical given that I was in there and I like, couldn't eat for the majority of the time. But I just really, really like food. So I watched some cooking shows. A Cutthroat Kitchen, that's when I discovered it up on, up in that whole stay. Awesome. Love that show. Well, like I said, I had that bag for 10 months. Uh, it didn't really hinder me too much. I had some, you know, some leaking issues just because of where it was placed. Um, and I couldn't, like, lay on my bed 
because I didn't have one of those like cover belts because I didn't know how long I was going to have the ostomy bend for. It was just a stopgap measure to let my colon heal because I couldn't tell where the sutures had failed to initially, like that was initially causing the leak that ended up me having the bag. Um, and you know, I did an, did an, hell, like I did an alumni tournament you know, with the bag. I had to tell people that I was defending. I was like, hey, don't, don't run at me. I lifted them like, I have a bag of shit literally hanging off my body. Which kind of unsettled a few people, but I mean, it was like two weeks before my, the surgery to get rid of the thing. So I didn't want to buy one of those like $80 belts to, and get the cover for it so that it wouldn't pop. Um, but you know, it was, it was a rough 10 months because I could not gain weight and I had some nu nutrition issues. Uh, blood work, I think, before a mo couple months before the surgery, showed that I had some major vitamin deficiencies, specifically B12, vitamin D, and uh, I want to say iron. I think was another one, but I've constantly had issues with uh, iron anemia, or at least slight iron anemia. Like right now, I'm back on a twice a day uh, iron regimen for that. And then in uh, May, what was it like May 4th, 2015? Got the bag off. And the year since has been awesome. I've gained like 30 pounds, most of ever weight, which I want to pare down, as I've said in previous videos. Get back down to around 150 and actually be in shape. Uh, but overall, pain's been good. The drugs work good. And I'm hoping the colonoscopy turned out good. Still haven't heard back from the doctor on how everything looked. Don't know if that was because, like I said, the magnesium sector didn't kick in, even though I took it to four hours before, until after the procedure, despite the hour and a half wait time to get into the operating room, which was kind of nuts. But... We'll see, and I'll probably throw in a little blurb about that next week for episode 20. Uh, but but I got to do a whole other topic thing, because next week's episode, I'm really, really excited for. But that is more or less my journey with Crohn's disease. Uh, kind of in a pared down 10 minutes or less, this is me in Crohn's disease. Um, so, yeah, that's that's all I got. Uh, if you have any questions like specifically about the disease and the insurance stuff for the medications I've been on, anything like that, let me know in the comments below. And as always, drop a like if the video was worth it. Hit subscribe to stay up to date with all my latest videos. Follow me on Twitter and give me topics there at Mr. Warford. And I'll see you later.